welcome to Outside Xbox, your watching show of the week. I'm Jane. And I'm Andy. This week I played a Hitman mission generated by random Hitman mission generator, Hitman Roulette. Can I go upstairs like this? Let's find out. I think I can. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Okay, I can't, wow. I can't go wow. upstairs. It is so much harder than regular roulette. Didn't you lose your life savings playing regular roulette? Yeah, and it was really easy. Well, things really went downhill for you there. They certainly did. I guess you could say um, that it snowballed. Certainly one way to phrase it. Um, you must have been pretty pee pieced off. Please stop. Wait, did you mention steep yet? No. I mean, you have sort of ruined the surprise there, Jane, but yes, this week we're all about Steep, the open world extreme winter sports game in which you do skiing, snowboarding, wingsuiting, paragliding, and whatever this is. <laughs> Set in the Alps, Steep sets you down on a mountainside and leaves you to it, letting you uncover different routes, drop zones and challenges as you explore or scout around with your binoculars. And once you reach the bottom of the mountain, there's no lengthy ski lift ride back to the top thanks to a seamless fast travel system that'll set you back at any of the drop zones you've unlocked so far. How you get around the slopes is up to you thanks to something called the sports wheel. The sports wheel is both what I call any piece of sporting equipment I don't know the name of and a handy radial menu that lets you switch between skiing, snowboarding, wingsuiting and paragliding on the fly. It's not always beneficial to attempt to change your sporting gear while hurtling down a mountain at terminal velocity, but these are the lessons you learn on your way to becoming an extreme sports champion. No! It's not all aimless open world shushing, however. There are events for you to take part in, ranging from races to trick attacks, as well as the more laid-back mountain stories in which the mountain you're currently snowboarding all over tells you its rich and ancient history, presumably before asking you to get off and go bother some other mountain. In this, the coldest of winters, I gift snow-covered peaks and landscapes filled with endless possibilities. These challenges all naturally come with online leaderboards and can be played in the game's multiplayer mode, which populates your mountain with other players who are playing online, letting you challenge them to races, impress them with tricks, or just explore alongside. Maybe you'll find a Yeti. You probably won't find a Yeti. Oh, yeah! It's been a long time since the days of SSX and we're ready for another snowboarding game to capture our hearts. Time will tell if Steep is that game, but until then it's a soothing slice of snowy sports that makes a nice change from all the shooters currently doing the rounds, even if the concept of sentient mountains does make us feel a bit weird. Some of you will explore me on foot, or <laughs> on those awfully strange contraptions you strap to your feet. Yeah, sorry about that mountain gliding to an elegant stop at the bottom of the mountain. A uh, bit dull, can't you ragdoll down the mountain and land it in a giant pile of broken limbs and ski gear? Well, I mean, you could, but why would you want Excellent, because I love a game with a good ragdoll system. Yeah, I remember you saying. Although humanity's complex understanding of physics has paved the way for great advancements like space travel, fibre optic internet and the Large Hadron Collider, its greatest achievement is turning injured video game characters into a hilarious floppy tangle of limbs. <laughs> a rich scientific field of study that Steep takes full advantage of. Here now are our favourite cases of procedurally generated slapstick in physics having video games. Skyrim spends ages establishing itself as a plausible fantasy world full of people with convincing daily routines and a storyline that encompasses political and racial tensions, civil war and the awakening of a long forgotten threat. You started this war, plunged Skyrim into chaos, and now the Empire is going to put you down. Then it gives you the power to bellow so hard at someone that they go all limp and fly 30 feet backwards. <laughs> From then on, it's really difficult to take anyone seriously, knowing that you have the power to flex your diaphragm and make them cartwheel into space. What's that you said to be, Cicero from the Dark Brotherhood? No, I will not accompany you to the local guard's office to return my stolen goods. I have decided I no longer wish to marry you. My heart belongs to another. Maybe that last one was a little harsh. 
Hitman has done a good line in Ragdoll Body since the very beginning of the series, though we'll admit the technology was a little rudimentary to start with. Like how this guy's leg basically bends all the way up to by his ear? Hey, maybe he's just big into yoga. Still, that's nothing compared to the sheer amount of kickback that occurs when you're hit with a bullet from Agent 47's signature handguns, the Silver Ballers. They're probably named after the fact that they're good for getting a silver medal distance in the Olympic long jump. Who is it? Hey! It's Nico. During the multi-million dollar development of Grand Theft Auto 4, developer Rockstar managed to squirrel away a little bit of budget for some technology designed specifically to make Nico fall over in as hilarious a manner as possible. Which is the kind of spending we can get behind. The Euphoria engine is designed to make human bodies flop around in as realistic a manner as possible, which is funny enough when you bail out of a car at high speed. But the moment that makes however many zeros Rockstar wrote on the check for the Euphoria engine worth it is the one where Nico and Roman head out for a night on the lash and end up so drunk that they can barely stand. She wouldn't be able to resist you, Roman. Not many women can. The greatest criminal mind in all of Liberty City, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that the point of skating games isn't to pull off a 540 twist with fries or whatever, it's to cause as much bone crunching damage to your baggy trousered border as possible. And while the original Tony Hawk had just that one animation where your skater rolls from side to side for a moment before clambering back to his feet, Skate 3's Hall of Meat mode went for the full, excruciating ragdoll injury, complete with a detailed x-ray view of exactly which bones you'd snapped along the way. Just hand that list to your medical insurer and you're all set. Hall of Meat is a mode that was so phenomenally popular on YouTube that it caused EA to put the game back into print and it's now available as a backwards compatible title on Xbox One too. Also people can continue to maim defenseless skateboarders some six years after the game was released. I mean there's a legit skateboarding game in there too apparently but where's the fun in that? Sumo game Sumatori Dreams might look like it's set in an abstract world, it's actually a very realistic simulation of a fight outside of JD Weatherspoon's pub on a Friday night. With a pleasing wooliness that makes gang beasts look like a tournament ready technical fighting game, Sumatori Dreams is all about pushing the other guy over without staggering and face planting yourself. All while controlling a character who appears to have only learned to walk within the last six hours. And having built the ultimate recreation of the noble martial art of sumo wrestling, where next for developer Gravity Sensation? Soccer, apparently. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I have seen that sort of thing in FIFA as well. <laughs> now it's time to see what's written in the comments and what I've renamed all of Andy's Pokemon in Pokemon Moon. What? You better not have renamed Andy Jr. First up, your comments on last week's show about Assassin's Creed's Ezio collection and five people who love Ezio almost as much as we do. Oh, Ezio Auditore. I, I didn't expect to see you again. What with all that's happened. Ah, where are my manners? Welcome back. Commenter Silvio Grijalva enjoyed the warm hugs between our boy Ezio and legendary Renaissance genius Leonardo da Vinci, saying, The bro hugs were so cute. That's right, they were. Why do you think they call it Assassin's Creed Bro the Hood? They didn't co Never mind. Thank you for everything, my oldest friend. Gotta be careful hugging an assassin, though. Yeah, one wrong move and you accidentally trigger the hidden blade. And shing! You're looking at a kidney kebab. You. Katerina Sforza was the Countess of Forli and Imola and yet another person to be caught in Ezio Auditore's web of cheekbones and lip scars and exactly the right amount of stubble. To which commenter Rogue Dog X says, Wow Jane, by the time you got to Katerina, you sounded like you were ready to propose to Ezio. To which Jane says, Shut up, you are. What? I don't know any Ezio. What? Well, I'm convinced. <laughs> And to that clip, Mike, of you doing so poorly at House of Games, commenter Nathan Gerdica says, 
How does Mike master driving with shaky hands like that? Because Nathan, like professional Formula One drivers, I've got excellent twitch reflexes. That's why I'm twitching so much. I thought it was all the cans of premium energy drink. It's a, it's a lot of reasons. Next up, your comments on this video about the careless caregivers in games who probably shouldn't be put in charge of a kid. The problem is his entire home is packed to the rafters with lethal dangers, all at baby height. These include toxic window cleaning fluid, exposed plug sockets and washing machines. There's one more for the list in the form of SuperCow8689 who says, Haven't seen my Skyrim son in like three months. Not my fault he can't be a badass like his dad. Wow, that's almost as bad as this suggestion from commenter Joseph Michael Holland, who says, How about all of the player characters' mums in Pokemon? Happy 11th birthday, Red! Have fun infiltrating a gang's underground lair underneath a casino with your fire-breathing dragon. Hey, my mum sent me out to harass crime syndicates and fight animals against each other when I was 11, and it's turned me into the man I am today. That explains a lot, actually. None of you riffraff is getting adopted, ever. This pathologically cruel woman is in charge of all the orphan kids in Skyrim whose parents were, I don't know, eaten by dragons. Lastly, commenter Crystal King simply says, Octodad, no? What's wrong with Octodad? Just a normal everyday dad, right? <laughs> Who's that man with the three-piece suit? These games are for, for children! See? I always thought that title was weird. I mean, what does the Octo refer to? I guess he's got eight kids. Ah. Finally this week, your comments on this video of us playing Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Zombies in Spaceland mode. Oh, okay, I can play some arcade games to revive myself oh, sweet. or something. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's good. All right. I'm in like a limbo. Handy. You're in limbo. I'm in some sort of afterlife limbo, yeah. Nice. All yeah, right. Commenter Bailey Uniaki is jealous, saying, I tell you what, I wish the afterlife is just eternal vintage arcade games. Pac-Man forever! I don't know, I feel like I get bored of Pac-Man after like three or four centuries. Oh, they had Flappy Bird as well. Oh, in that case, it's fine. On his head. Oh my God, lasers! Oh, 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 oh no, the lasers laser. killed oh, us all! Oh, I'm being lasered! No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why am I being lasered? Oh my God. I didn't realize they were deadly oh, lasers. Oh, so oh God, bad. Oh God. Commenter Huynh Hu Vin, meanwhile, says, after working with Jane for four years, I thought the outside Xbox team should have already learned to stay away from the death laser by now. Ah, but as commenter Maria Fong points out, after watching outside Xbox for so long, I'm still surprised at how terrible their aim is. That's why we don't need to worry about the death laser. Jane couldn't hit the broad side of a laser barn. All right, I'm heading back in. I'll catch you later. Okay, bye. <laughs> not even close. That's it for Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. And before you go, why not let's open the outside Xbox advent calendar, door number two, and see what's behind it. Oh, it's it's a like button. You should press it and stuff. Is there not supposed to be a chocolate in there as well? No. 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 Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, let's get some lunch. Uh, I'd love to, but I've got to go and rename all my Pokemon. It's going to take ages. Oh, it's fine. I already did it for you. See? They can't all be called Jane. And yet, they are.